Samuel and Kenny McCaughey had never heard of septuplets. Samuel was born with a faulty pituitary gland, causing infertility issues. They had a daughter in 1998, Michaela Marie. After she grew up, they decided to try for another baby. When Samuel learned that his wife was expecting seven children at once, he panicked and tried to persuade her to follow the doctor's orders and lower the number of babies as he could not bear this large burden. When his wife refused, he left her and their eight children without knowing them. That made Kenny sad and frightened for her and her kids. Bobby, her neighbor and secret sweetheart, helped get her through this moment, who later became her husband and parent to all eight. Many people attacked the couple for keeping all the babies. When the news of their decision reached Carlisle, Iowa, the community rallied to their aid. Anxiety was understandable in the days before their big birth. They were aware of the risks of such an unplanned birth, and they were worried at times. Even then, they were elated and hopeful. Preparations for the septuplets began as Bobby neared her due date. On November 19, 1997, Bobby was abruptly hospitalized. The septuplets were ready to be born nine weeks early. Bobby had to have a C-section, and the babies all arrived within seven minutes of each other. Bobby McCaughey gave birth to septuplets at the Iowa Methodist Hospital Center in Des Moines. Lexi was born with a muscle condition that made eating painful. Natalie, her sister, had acid reflux and was in pain while eating. The babies were released from the hospital after three months and ten days. As soon as they were safely out of the hospital parking lot, the cops had to assure their safety. Police personnel ensured that they were not harassed outside their home till they moved. The McCaughey family could finally move into their new home. The 5,500-square-foot house transfer was marked by a unique ceremony. As everyone gathered in the garage of the house, Lloyd Clark, chairman of Clark Companies, enthusiastically presented Kenny the house keys. In December 1997, Time magazine approached Bobby and Kenny about conducting a feature on them. The septuplets were suddenly famous, not only in their area, but nationwide. Many reporters and news agencies covered the septuplet's tale, but many had not covered it themselves. Officially, ABC News Prime Time was the first station to air their story, but the rest of the reporters simply repeated it. With all the press, the McCaughey's were going to get some bad press. Some said they harmed the environment by having too many kids. Despite the nasty comments and accusations, Bobby and Kenny stood firm. Bobby and Kenny have been enamored with their miraculous birth but it was time to start living a normal life, which meant privacy. They agreed to appear only in public for their kids' birthdays. The Dion quintuplets aided them in their decision. A public overexposure of their children was advised against by the Dion quintuplets. They were born in 1934 in Ontario, Canada, and grew up in poverty. The youngsters were exploited and made into a circus act for the public, causing them great damage. Bobby and Kenny chose to focus on the kids' daily needs. It was a chance for parents to learn about their challenges. Laundry was a huge project that took up a lot of time. They were doing roughly 17 loads of laundry per week and needed two washing machines and two dryers to keep up. Can you picture the daily diaper count if it was the laundry? The septuplets went through 52 diapers and 42 bottles each day on average. The septuplets were physically draining for Bobby. She had to hand pump breast milk for all the babies, which amounted to four to five gallons per week until they were three months old. Potty training a child can be done quickly if done correctly. Michaela, the eldest McCaughey child, was ready in four days. Potty training seven kids at once was a different story, and they expected it to take months. Two parents could never care for the septuplets and their one-year-old daughter alone. Friends, family, and strangers came to help clean, change, play, and care for the babies. The individuals that aided the family were not always expected. Even the contractors working on the McCaughey's house wanted to help and took turns cradling and caring for the babies. Of course, the public support was enormous, but the impact on family was absolutely unparalleled. Michelle, Bobby's sister, plays with one of her infants. In a flash, Michelle became an aunt to seven. 
Even though there were roughly 70 volunteers, one exceptional youngster felt compelled to assist. Michaela Marie, their first child, would assist feed and play with her siblings. The Mackay's assistance was a complete blessing, but having eight toddlers in the house had other issues. One of the challenges was money, so the couple decided to buy in bulk, lowering their monthly grocery bill to roughly $300. Even though the McCaughey's new neighborhood was used to septuplets, they were nevertheless shocked each time they saw them. People were amazed every time the septuplets were pushed in their limousine-like strollers. It was just the start of their cost-cutting strategy. The next step was to plant a vegetable garden. It allowed them to raise, pick, and eat their own veggies. It was the parents' duty to take their kids to the doctor regularly Bringing up seven children at the same age at the same time was not like raising a normal family. The septuplets were regularly watched. Breakfast is the most essential meal of the day, but did you know it's also the Mikahi twins' favorite meal? Do you think newborns have a language? The reality is they do, and it's called cryptophagia. Twins, triplets, or septuplets utilize this phrase. The septuplets spoke a language no one else understood. Each time the septuplets' birthdays was unique. Birthdays were an occasion to thank God for delivering Bobby and Kenny an unexpected gift. Every child's birthday was cause for celebration. Their birthdays were a time to praise God for their health and happiness. Each year proved the McCaughey's decision to keep the babies was correct. Bobby and Kenny faced problems they never predicted. Keep up with the septuplets' clothes. Their age were the same, but not their clothing sizes. The Mackay septuplets grew rapidly, necessitating additional clothing. Of course, their older sister, Michaela, couldn't give them all hand-me-downs. Then Carter's, a children's apparel brand, declared they would dress the septuplets until they turned five. The enthusiasm and hoopla around the kids didn't fade away as they grew older. The President of the United States, Bill Clinton, contacted Bobby and Kenny to wish them well. They would later meet President George W. Bush. Bobby will never forget the President Clinton phone call because of anything he said to her. When those kids go to school, you can obtain a job heading any major firm in America, he stated generally. You'll be America's best organized manager. That call stuck with her. Not only did the heads of state want to meet the septuplets, but so did their state governors. Governor Terry Branstead was excited to meet the Macaulay septuplets, as was one of the youngsters. A birthday requires a birthday cake, and a birthday cake requires candles. They had only one cake with four candles for their fourth birthday. Why? Bobby and Kenny wanted to teach their kids the value of sharing and contentment. It was no surprise that these septuplets had distinct personalities. Each one added something special to their family's dynamic. The family felt Kenny Jr. was the clown, while Joel and Natalie were the bookworms. Brandon was the boldest and most stubborn. Kenny Jr. was one of the children who stood out. He was the pint-sized explorer, and he was everywhere. Kenny Jr. was the septuplet with the most mischief. Bobby and Kenny defined each other in their own manner as follows. Sweet and perceptive. Alexis. Joel is reflective. As in sporty fashionista. Kenny Jr. is a doer. Nathan is astute. Brendan is fun and athletic. Perfectionist high achiever, Natalie. Bobby and Kenny discovered that having so many kids entails a lot of, but they needed to keep their love life alive, so they designated one night a week as their date night. Who says a busy schedule can't include a special activity for your kids? Bobby and Kenny made it happen by taking Michaela and the septuplets to Disney World in Orlando. Ladies Home Journal got lucky when the Macaulay parents consented to let their kids be on the cover. The article about them on their eighth birthday helped other parents. In 2001, the septuplets met President George W. Bush. The kids didn't know who he was, but he knew who they were. The meeting required matching attire for both boys and girls. Growing up, some TV networks enjoyed the concept of making their family a reality show. Bobby and Kenny hated the idea. They just wanted their kids to grow up like other kids. Premature birth might have had various consequences. The Mackay septuplets had a few. Alexis and Nathan were born with cerebral palsy, which made them unable to walk. 
Their cerebral palsy wouldn't stop them from doing great things, even if they needed walkers to go around. Every day, Nathan pushed himself to walk, getting closer to his objective. I taught myself to walk because I wanted to learn, he remarked. It keeps getting better. Alexis has severe cerebral palsy, but she hasn't let that stop her. She was crowned Teen Miss Dreams Made Come True in 2013 and has left an effect on everyone she meets. It was their 16th birthday in a flash. They were excited to be taking driving lessons and getting closer to maturity. But driving lessons were costly, so their father felt it was a good time to teach them. Despite their extraordinary birth and upbringing, they were just like any other teenagers. Some were in love, some were looking for work, while yet others were already behind the wheel. These septuplets graduated in May 2016. Kenny and Bobby found it weird to witness their babies graduate from high school. After high school, the kids all moved off to discover their passion. Alexis and Kenny Jr. attended Des Moines Community College. Did we mention Alexis graduated first in her high school class? Brandon joined the U.S. Army, proving he is the bravest of the lot. His ambition of being a soldier began when he was three years old and has now come true. Kenny Jr. is hands-on individual who used his expertise well. He learned he loved carpentry and has since added additional crafty tasks to his portfolio. The Bacaghi kids were blessed with two special school offers. The state of Iowa said the septuplets might attend any university in the state. Hannibal LaGrange University in Mississippi granted all the kids a scholarship. Nathan, Natalie, Kelsey, and Joel all accepted the offer. Another Macaulay child who excels at her craft, Lexi, opted to pursue her passion in early childhood education. She occasionally discusses her experiences on social media. Yes, the McCoys have a scientist. Nathan will be the next Einstein. Okay, don't quote anyone, but we're sure he'll do wonderful things. What are a bunch of kids without a musician? They were all in the school band, right? Kelsey will soar after Hannibal LaGrange. Did we mention that the McCaughys only had one scientist? That's not right. There's also Joel. However, Joel is a computer science student. The same goes with Natalie. She'll also bring the kids. Her passion is the talent and it's teaching children, and she plans to teach in elementary school. Bobby and Kenny felt unprepared for the next chapter of their lives when the septuplets went on. It wasn't easy going from a noisy, crowded house to a quiet, empty one. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.